What's up everyone? Today we have this, the iFi Zen DAC V2. Um, it's a digital analog converter as well as a headphone amp. Uh, I'll be testing out the headphone amp part. It's not exactly high powered, but we'll see. I have other parts off to the side there. As you can see, it's a 12 watt Apple charger, as well as a USB to barrel plug adapter. Uh, because it doesn't come with a power supply. It believes, you know, I believe it says you can power it off the, uh, power it off the, what's it called? USB jack. Because uh, I will be running it off USB, but I'm not sure if it could use a bit of, you know, extra power. We'll see. Couldn't find much info on that, so. I'm gonna be testing that out myself. The box is a little slightly damaged, as you can see. But let's hope the amp is all right. <clears throat> all right, so it comes with a sticker. Right there. Uh, manual. Uh, Accessories you could buy. And some other stuff. Warranty card, too. Not sure what that is. Here's the amp itself. What color is it? Slightly darker than the picture. I'm going to tell you that. So be aware of that. Volume knob feels substantial. Buttons feel pretty substantial. Made of nice materials. Um, two audio out jacks. That same USB connector, gold plated. And then that power adapter. I wanna see if my cable fits. I bought this on Amazon, as you know. Let's see, and it does, it does fit. So it says DC five volts. Don't plug in anything more than five volts. I won't do that. <clears throat> Little uh, thank you message for buying a Wi-Fi DAC. I hope it's a good DAC. Oh, accessories. I wonder if it comes with a power adapter. Doubt it. Oh, they put did they put the box in correctly. Oh, it's on both sides. It's a little. Thing. I'm not sure you can see it, it says iPhone on that. Very subtle. Attention to detail. I like that. <clears throat> In here you get a very short pair of RCA cables. And you get a very short uh, USB 3.0 to type B USB 3.0 cable. And you also get this. It's a very nicely made a uh, quarter inch to 3.5 millimeter jack to connect to smaller headphones. Not smaller, but uh, normal headphones. The more common kind. Even though most of my headphones already have it. This also is a balanced out. I might buy some balanced cables for my other headphones if I like this one, if I like this DAC. <clears throat> I do have some headphones with detachable cables which would support balanced uh, a balanced uh, cable for more power, you know, and supposedly better sound. <clears throat> uh, put that away as well. Okay. All right, let's just see if it even turns on. Is it always on? I don't know. There's only one input, USB. So I'm not sure why they have that power jack there. I guess for additional power. Because uh, there's no other inputs. It's a USB DAC. So that's why I said, you know, let's give it some extra power. I'll be running stuff like an HD6XX here, which is... I would say considerably power hungry. I'm surprised I found the cable. I'll link it in the description if it works. If it doesn't, probably not. 
<clears throat> Nothing. Does it need to be? Oh wait, no. It detects external power. It's green, so I think that means it is working. But I'll have to test that. I think it needs a USB input. It feels really nice, really nice materials. Nice uh, buttons and all that. A little high res audio sticker there, like it. Yeah, I do want to test out balanced audio and I really like the little adapter they included. It looks really high quality. Um, these RCA cables, they're RCA cables. I think it's meant to connect to like a... <clears throat> they're really short, so I'm not sure what you're gonna use these for. And I also want to test out, these are RC outputs, I believe. So I'm going to see if when you, when you plug in headphones, it mutes the output. I mean, like, what are you plugging this into? It's only like a foot long. Your laptop, perhaps, but I'm going to be using it with a desktop, so I'll probably want a longer cable. And I believe I have a longer one, the one that came with my gaming monitor. It's just a USB... 3.0 type B cable. So yeah, I got longer versions of all those cables. And I had to buy this power cable on my own. I'll link all the parts I have in the description. So if it works, that is. This video probably won't go up if it doesn't work. But yeah, first time trying out an iFi uh, DAC. It's a DAC amp combo. You can always use the balanced out here to connect it to the Zen Can, I believe. That's their headphone, proper headphone amp, I believe. It has a, I'm not too familiar with the products. This is the first one I got, like I said. They're popular ones, so I decided to try it out. Let me go hook it up to my computer. There's a driver you have to install, I think. I'll show you, uh, and I'll show you when it's working. Okay, so as you can see, I have this, the iFi Zen DAC V2 set up at my computer setup. There are two RCA cables running through the output to my speakers. Um, those are not actually the RCA cables. They've been split so that I can run a subwoofer as well. But I don't have one set up right now, so I just turned up the bass on these ones. <clears throat> so it turns out that switch on the back between variable and fixed controls whether the volume knob affects those outputs, essentially outputs from the DAC. So it gets the processing done on here and sent out there. So you have essentially a set of analog outputs, either at line level or that, whatever you've set here. Of course I have it on variable so that I can adjust, so I can set this volume and leave it and then uh, change the volume using this knob here. I could always set it to fixed and use that volume knob but the only issue I have with it is that it doesn't mute the output when you have headphones connected. So if I plug in these headphones, it won't mute those speakers, which is a slight issue because uh, I use headphones because I don't want to use the speakers. So when I do want to use headphones, I power off the speakers so that it only makes noise through the headphones. And when I want to use the speakers, I unplug the headphones and turn on the speakers. But that wasn't really the case with my, with my old one, which is this thing. Like I said, I just connected it to the computer's built-in output. This is a topping uh, L30 Mark II, uh, version 2.0, whatever. And it has a volume knob and it has two switches, one for gain, three levels of gain, and then uh, right here, which now you can see it says pre, HPA, and off. So off is just, well, off, it doesn't work when it's set to off. HPA is headphone amp, and PRE, pre, is um, preamp, it means preamp. So then, then it would send it through the output. So if I want to uh, use the speakers, I would have set it to uh, pre, and when I want to use the headphones, I set it to HPA. So then I can actually leave the headphones connected. So this was one of the, the better amps I've had. But I do like the style and build quality of that one, as well as the, the function that I was discussing earlier, true bass. It really does put back the low level frequencies that normally wouldn't be produced. 
uh, that I couldn't hear from other devices. So it does work, but sometimes a little bit much. So I've been, I've only tested that with one headphone, the Hi-Fi Man Sandara closed back. But I will be testing it with others like the HD6XX, uh, the Audio-Technica ATH-R70X. And I'll let you know if it's enough power. So I have it actually set to power match on. Uh, you might be wondering that it's kind of like a gain stage. When it's on, you have more gain. When it's off, you have less. It's kind of like the gain settings here. So it's like setting it to medium or high, you know, or low or medium. You know, like you have low for like IEMs or something like that. I don't have any. Uh, medium for most headphones. High for, you know, low uh, low sensitivity, high impedance, say uh, planar magnetics or something like that, you know, or even dynamic ones too. Yeah, just anything that, that needs more power in general. So yeah, that is essentially a gain stage. It does affect the pre-out. I have it set to on because it seems to work with the headphones I've tested it with so far. I'll let you know if there's any in my collection that don't need it. Okay, so I also forgot to mention this. So here is the... Uh, name of the device this thing doesn't say exactly what it is but its maximum resolution is 32 bit 384. yeah it just doesn't do anything else the lowest resolution is 1644 one which is actually standard on a few laptops i've had so yeah it's super high resolution stuff and then i also installed the driver from their website so you put in the serial number of your device and uh it pops up a driver or at least manuals, drivers, updates, whatever. And then here is what's in there. It's essentially the, I've seen this control panel before, I think with FIO devices, when I had my FIO K5 Pro uh, DAC amp combo a couple of years ago, I installed its drivers and got this as well. I just left it on its default 49, is it 4096? 512. Hmm. I think it was 512. I don't know what its default was. Just leave it on 512 or something. <clears throat> anyway, info. Yeah, this stuff. Why is it serial number three? <laughs> That's a very different one. Whatever, maybe it's pulling the wrong info. But it's interesting how when I set it to 64 samples, the output latency is still 2.5. Change it to 128, still 2.5. All the way up to 124, and that changed to 4.5. So perhaps that's why it was at 512, because that was the biggest buffer size that wouldn't change the output latency. I don't know. <clears throat> but that's that menu. And here's this, I would leave it at 100 because your real volume control is this right here. So you're giving it as much signal as possible from the computer so that you can change it here. So its output is actually plenty for this one. Even at decently loud listening levels, I only had it at the say 11 o'clock position, 11.30 position on, the, on here. So about there, it's still pretty loud, so. Yeah, I would have to say it's definitely sufficient. I'll let you know what I think about it with other headphones. I've been using the iFi Zendac V2 for a couple weeks, a few weeks now. Um, and it's good, it's very good. Uh, I've figured out that, okay, I need to turn off my speaker when I want to use my headphone. And, uh, you know, that it'll play out of both if I keep if I leave it connected. They really should have a automatic headphone detection circuit in there, but whatever. But that's not the biggest issue. It is when you unplug and plug in the computer. When you unplug it and plug it back in from the computer. So apparently that warning was real. 
when I installed it. So some like you know, you may have to reinstall this software if you change what plug it's plugged into, depending on your computer or something like that. Something along those lines. Anyway, I did. I unplugged my computer to clean it. I haven't cleaned my computer in a while, so I did that. Took it out to the garage, cleaned it out, and when I brought it back in, plugged everything back in. Everything worked except for this. So I reinstalled the driver. That didn't fix it. Um, I unplug and plug back in the USB, that didn't fix it. I changed the USB port, that didn't fix it. You know what did fix it? You have to unplug the auxiliary power as well. As well as the USB port. You gotta do both. And then it works. But I'm not gonna experiment again with it. Uh, only do that when I have to. Not for YouTube. Uh, it's working right now, don't need to change it. It's good as it is. It's actually connected to a USB hub right now, I believe. So, just to save up another USB 3.0 port. It does power all my headphones. You know, small stuff like the easy to drive stuff like the Sony MDR1A M2 as well as I'd say more power hungry stuff like this. The Audio Technica ATH R70X 400 and what? 70 ohms? 400 something ohms, uh, that's a lot. And it powers my HD6XX, which is 300 ohms. So, I think it's 300. Uh, maybe. Uh, let's stop it. I'm on their site right now for some reason because I was showing something in another video. But the first, I was on Drop's site right now, and I'm gonna call them out now because the first, what, 75% of the page is marketing. It's all marketing. Like, I want you to buy my stuff, and then, uh, and then like, it, I have to scroll down like all the way to like 75 or more percent of the page and then I see the specs. Come on, we're enthusiasts, we're headphone enthusiasts already, that's why we're on this site. Uh, don't show us the marketing stuff, just show us the specs, show us the measurements, that's what we want to see. And then show us some marketing later. Some cool pictures and a nice environment and stuff like that, whatever. 300 ohms, it can power that. Sensitivity, what is it? Does it even say? No, it doesn't. Interesting. Not in the official specs. Either way, good amp. Buy it. Uh, if you're looking for something that combines both an amp and a DAC. Uh, I turn it up to here, maybe like 50%, and it's already very good. That true bass thing uh, does enhance the bass if you turn it off. Like Their music sounds kind of dry, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, on these nicer, more expensive, enthusiast-grade headphones. But yeah, turn it on, you know, adds a bit of energy to it. Actually makes it sound more realistic, oddly enough. I do leave power match on because it kind of is like high gain in a way. And, it, yeah, it works. Uh, I did use the balanced headphone jack on the Sony MDR-1A M2. It comes with a 4.4 millimeter balanced uh, cable, but I think balance is a bit much for that headphone, because, I mean, and that, that cable's a bit confusing as well, because it terminates in 3.5 mil, which is only 3 pole, whereas balance is 4, it has 4 rings, 4, uh, you know, gold colored rings on the, on the, um, the plug, so I'm not sure how it still becomes balanced, so whatever. It does what it does. I might get a proper balanced cable for one of my headphones uh, that, you know, like use two, two cables, for example, that one, and see if that makes a real difference other than a lot more power. Because yeah, I had to only turn it up and say, I don't know, maybe that much to, to be already uncomfortably loud with the MDR1A. Yeah, this much is okay from the unbalanced uh, jack for others. It's plenty loud. I usually leave it around there. 
when I'm listening through my speakers, I mean, there isn't as much difference. So like this the nine o'clock to 12 o'clock doesn't make much of a difference, just slightly. So there's my final thoughts about the iFi Zendak V2. Do buy it, it's a really nice amp. All the stuff that I used for it um, will be linked in the description. You do need to know a little bit about messing around with computers and drivers and software and stuff like that if you want to use it to its fullest. Actually, to even use it at all. And if you move your computer, be prepared to set this thing up again. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.